So in section 7.3, that's called solving your system by adding or subtracting, we're going to learn a new method besides substitution of um, solving a system of linear equations. So a couple things to remind you. Um, just like in Ella, uh, substitution, um, we're going to have the same goal. But in order to solve for a variable, we need to get one equation. So that's really the key here. So we are looking to get one equation. So one equation one equation in terms of one variable. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work out a quick substitution problem here just to remind you. So in substitution we found a variable that could be easily isolated, in this case it's y, and we got y is equal to twelve minus four x. And we got this by subtracting from uh, 4x from the left and the right side. Once we isolated the y, we then substituted it in in the second equation. So instead of y, we're not going to be using 12 minus 4x. So the new equation we got was 2x minus 5, and we replaced y with 12 minus 4x. And this is how we got one equation with only one variable. So in elimination, our goal is going to be the same. We want to get one equation with one variable in it. And it could either be x or y, but we need one variable. So how can we eliminate a variable? Well, the idea is that you can add, if two things are equal, then we can add them to the left side and the right side of the equation. So for example, if you are solving x minus 3 is equal to 5, what do you do? You add 3 to both sides. So since 3 is the same, or it's equal to 3, we can add it to the left and the right side, and things are still going to be equal to each other. So in this case, since 4x plus y and 12 are both equal to each other, I can add 4x and the y to the left side of the equation, and then I can add 12 to the right side of the equation. Now let's see what happened. We get 6x's, 4y's, or negative 4y's, if we do it correctly. So negative 4y's is equal to 18. Well, um, it's actually not going to get us any closer to our solution because we still have two variables. So we're going to rethink this a little bit. So we still want to add the two equations, but what we need to realize is that if we just add it the way it is, our x's are going to become, uh, we're still going to have six x's and we're still going to have negative four y's and we're still going to have both x and y in our equation, but if we had five y on the top, then my y's would actually eliminate. So how can I get from y to 5y? Well, you can multiply everything by 5. So your equation is actually 20x plus 5y is equal to 60. So now, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take the left side of my equation and add it to the left side of my second equation. And then I'm going to take the right side of my equation, which is 60, and add it to the right side of the equation. So two things that are equal can be added to both sides of the equation. So look what happens now. I get 22x. You get 0y, so the y variable actually gets completely eliminated. And I get 66 on the right-hand side. And then we would divide both sides by 22 and get 3 for our x. Now remember that we're solving a system of two equations. So we still need to find x and y. So in order to solve for y, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to one of our equations. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to go back to the first one. So my equation was 4x plus y is equal to 12. And I know that x is actually now 3 because I solved for x, so I'm going to replace it. And we get 12 plus y is equal to 12, and by subtracting 12 we would add, 
get the answer of y being equal to zero. So my answer is going to be three comma zero. So again, the idea of elimination is to add left side of this equation to the left side of this equation and the right side of this equation to the right side of this equation. It's still gonna keep things equal, but we're trying to eliminate one of the variables, x or y, and that is why it's called elimination. And actually, I'm just gonna highlight our answer so we know what it is. Okay. So this is going to be a relatively short lesson because we only have three examples. Okay, so you're going to quickly scan. You're going to take this equation, so keep one of them unchanged. Right, so we have negative 2x plus 5. y is equal to 13. Okay, now you want to quickly scan and see if you, the, if you add the left side to the left side the way it is, would you eliminate a variable? So if I add 2x and 3y to the left, would one of my variables eliminate? And it would because your x um, is going to give you 0 because we have 2x. I'm going to add 3y. And then I'm going to add the right side to the right side. So this right here will get eliminated because we have a negative 2x and a positive 2x. I will get 8y on the left side, and I will get 24y on the right, or 24 on the right side. To solve for y, we're going to divide both sides by 8, and we get y to be 3. We're not done because we still need to solve for x. So we're going to go back, and we're going to pick one of the equations. I'm going to pick the first one. And we already found y to be 3, so we're going to substitute 3 in for y. And you get 2x plus 9 is equal to 11. Subtract 9. You get 2x is equal to 2, which means that x has to be equal to 1. So your answer is going to be, or solution, is 1, 3. And you want to be 100% sure that you just did this correctly. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to check. Now the best way to check is to actually use the second equation. So if you chose the first equation to find the second variable, then you should use the second equation to check because then if you made a mistake you'll be able to catch it. So I'm going to check. I'm replacing x with 1 and I'm replacing y with 3 and I get negative 2 plus 15 and it works out so I'm 100% confident that I just got this correct. So pause the video and try these three examples. Remember, before you start adding, make sure that um, you are going to get a, one of the variables eliminated. And remember that when you're solving, you are looking for x and y. So you do need to find both of them. OK, so here's example two. Um, and there's actually two ways to do this. So the first way is to use subtraction. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, if you look at your equation, you have 3y and you have 3y. So if we add them, we're actually going to get 6y. And if we add these ones, we're going to get 9x's. So nothing's going to get eliminated. However, if we subtract 3y from 3y, then we get 0y. And then the y variable gets eliminated. So what you could do is take one of your equations. So I'll take my first one. And instead of adding the two equal sides to the left and the right, I'm going to subtract them. And you have to be very, very careful here. So you're going to subtract 5x, subtract 3y, and then subtract a negative 2. And this is where you have to be careful, the subtracting a negative. All right, so look what happened. We have 4x minus 5x, which gives us negative 1x, negative 3y, and positive through y are going to get eliminated, so we don't have y's at all. And then 2 minus negative 2 is actually going to turn into 2 plus 2. Because remember that minus the negative is actually going to give you a plus. So this is going to be 4. Now we're trying to solve for x, so then we're going to 
get answer of negative 4. So that's one way. Now the second method is going to be to change one of the equations. So if you realize that if you leave the equations the way they are, nothing's going to get eliminated, but if you get negative 3y here, your y's will get eliminated. What you can actually do is multiply everything in your first equation by negative 1. And we, um, you're allowed to do that as long as you multiply every single piece of your equation by the same number. So my first equation becomes negative 4x minus 3y is equal to negative 2. My second equation is going to be unchanged. And now we're just going to add just like we did earlier. So you're going to take your original equation. You're going to add the left side to the left side. And you're going to add the right side to the right side. So you're adding a negative 2. And then you end up with 1x, your y's eliminate, is equal to negative 4 you get exactly the same answer. So it doesn't matter whether you want to subtract or you want to add. You have to be careful with subtracting when it comes to subtracting a negative. So if you choose the subtraction method, just be careful. Now notice that we actually don't have an answer for y. So we do need to solve for y. And um, this is done just by substituting x that we found into one of the equations. So we found x to be negative 4. and you get negative 16 minus 3y is equal to 2 at 16 and we get negative 3y is equal to 18 so y has to be negative 6 so my answer will be negative 4 negative 6 that's it Okay, so that's my answer for example two. So here, try this one on your own. Um, you are going to eliminate x's, so that's the hint for you, because you have seven x and seven x. You can either use subtraction or you could change one of your equations to make it negative seven x. So it's your choice, you can use one of the methods, but make sure the answer is correct by uh, checking it at the end. Okay, so here is gonna be our last example. So um, what's wrong with this example right now is that if you notice, your x's and your y's are not really aligned. Um, so what you could do, um, you could rearrange the second equation to make it look more like this. So we're going to have x's, y, x's, y's, and then equal to a number. So what I want to do is I want to move the x, um, x's over to the left side. So I'm going to subtract 3x. So I get negative 3x plus 4y is equal to 14. And now I can easily see that my y's can get, can get eliminated because I have negative 4y and a positive 4y. So we're going to add the left side to the left sides together and the right sides together. So 8x minus 3x is going to give us 5x. On the right hand side we have 14 minus 4 which is 10. We're going to divide both sides by 5, and that gives us an answer of 2. We do have to find y, so um, you can use either with the first equation or the second equation. I'm going to use the second equation. So 4y is equal to 3 times x, and we find x to be 2, plus 14. So 4y is equal to 6 plus 14, which is 20. And then when I divide by uh, both sides by 4, I get my answer for y. So my answer for this problem is 2, 5. Now what I want to do is I just want to show you um, that you can also use substitution in here because if you notice, you have 4y here and you have 4y here. So what you can actually do is you can substitute 3x plus 14 instead of 4y because they're equal to each other. So that's just a different strategy. So 8x minus, and instead of 4y, we're going to use 3x plus 14 is equal to negative 4. And I just want to solve this to show that you get the same answer. 
So um, this is a substitution method, but you actually don't have to isolate the y because you have 4y in here and you have 4y here, so you can substitute the way it is. And what you get is 8x minus 3x minus 14 is equal to negative 4. These are like terms, so we can combine them. So 5x minus 14 is equal to negative 4. Add 14, add 14 here. So I get 5x is equal to 10. Divide both sides by 5, and I get the same answer. So um, just wanted to show you that you can also use substitution here. Um, it gives you the same exact answer, so it's your personal choice. And we still we would also find y to be 5. OK, so um, you can use any method you like to solve uh, for x and y. Um, whatever you like better. So you could use substitution if you'd like, you could use elimination. Um, if you're going to use elimination, you do want to rearrange your terms to have x's and y's to be together. Um, so solve it and check it and use any method you like. Now in the last two slides, you have some review problems. They're not optional. You do have to do them. And um, we want to go back to the first two sections in the chapter and make sure that you could solve linear system by graphing. And also, you could solve a uh, linear system by substitution. And this is specifically asking you to use substitution, so you want to make sure that you actually use the right method.